Hi everyone, my name is Emma from Emma Paulson Learning Design and I'm here to show you how to use the labelled graphic in RISE. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so these are the examples I'm going to take you through today. So a couple of simpler designs here and then moving on to one where you would combine a couple of blocks to create this type of graphic. Okay, so let's start with the first one here. So when you want to add your block, you click on the plus sign here and then go to interactive and then it's called label graphic. Now we often call this a hotspot, so I might use those interchangeably. So I'm um, just a heads up there. Okay, the first thing you want to do is add your image. Now, sometimes this can be quite hard to find because it's this little button tucked down the bottom here. So you might want to scroll down um, to find this button, but let's upload that graphic. Okay, and what you'll spot here is that at the end of each of my graphics, I have added underscore, no process, underscore, and that's so that Rise doesn't compress my images. So this is the first one. And by default, Rise gives you two markers um, automatically on there. Now they're placeholders, but what they are handy for is being able to see how much text you can fit in. Now this is at 0.14 font and um, size and also there's about 64 words there. Now I wouldn't go over that because it does get a little bit awkward for the learner to scroll down if there's more inside that hotspot once they've clicked it. Now I tend to delete these um, immediately and um, because I find it easier for me to position my own markers from scratch. Okay. So my graphic has uploaded now and you can see that I have these vertical lines. Now, not only are these a visual um, enhancement, they actually act as a bit of a marker for me. So I know that I need one at the bottom of each of these lines. Now, there are no alignment tools in RISE. Um, so sometimes you'll see that your markers don't align and they look a bit wonky. This is a good way of being able to make sure that they all align. Okay, so I've added my markers in now, and then you, of course, can add your text and content in on the left-hand side here. Um, so this one, digital, and then you'd add your body of your text there. And you can, of course, upload some media like images, videos, um, or embed a file from the web, um, and you can record some audio. Now, the only thing I'm going to do today is just change the marker style. Um, so um, bear in mind here that if you are using numbers that it does max out at nine. So if you are doing a process document, for example, um, it does max out at nine, but I'm just going to use these little circles for today. And this is a visual um, aid as well. So if you were to perhaps add in a question mark when you are adding your instructional text, you can say to the learner, click on each of the question marks below, for example. Um, but in this instance, I just want um, the little circles. And then I've finished off with this one. Okay, one thing to bear in mind here as well when you are editing your content is the order in which they appear. Mine are in order, but sometimes this can trip you up and I'll show you um, later on why. Okay, so I've got my graphic in place. I've got my content. I'm happy with my markers. So now I can look at some other settings. Okay, um, so now I'm thinking I might want to add a bit more color here. So I can change the background of my graphic or I can change the marker color. In this instance, I think I'm going to have a play with the markers. Okay, so you can see here that you've got the two different spots, background and marker. Um, if you don't have this plugin here, I highly recommend it. It's a color picker plugin for our Chrome extension, sorry. Um, and, I, and I love it and I use it often. Um, so I'm just gonna select a green color there and I'm happy with that color choice. 
And you can also change the width of your graphic here. Um, by default, it is set to medium, which is working well for my graphic. Okay, so let's just say um, you wanted to add a background. Um, you also would fi um, fix that one up in here. Um, so let's just choose a random gray color. Um, and I might play with that padding as well, just so that the color um, either side of my graphic is equal. So I have an equal amount of padding here as I do here. Now, this has worked out really well for me because I uploaded a PNG. So the background of my graphic was clear, was transparent. Um, so that's a handy tip as well. Um, upload a transparent image rather than coloring in the background. Okay, so moving on to the next one. Um, let me just pop in an extra block there. Now, what I wanted to show you is how you could incorporate the hotspots or the markers into a graphic rather than on the outside, like the top one. Um, oh, pardon me. I do that all the time. Um, you can incorporate it into a graphic. So this one requires a little bit more um, precision um, and that, that comes into play when you are creating your graphic. Um, so you'll see if I open up my Illustrator file and I zoom in. Um, so this is the graphic I'm working with now. So I've got some different iconography and a bit of shading, but it's these circles here. Now for the medium graphic, this size works well, and that is 136 pixels. Um, so that's just a little tip there for you. Again, I'm going to remove those placeholders. And you can see, again, I've added in a sneaky little um, marker there, the little dots, so that I know where my markers go. Okay, so if I click on these, and add in my content. Okay, um, oh, that one's slightly off. Let's add, an, add that one back in. Okay, so what I wanted to show you on this one is to bear in mind the color of your markers. Okay, so by default, the marker is white. When I click on it, it changes to the color that you have chosen as your accent color for the whole course. Um, so just bear that in mind because it might not look great. However, if you do change the marker color, so up here, I changed it to green. When I click on it, it changes to white. So if you have a dark marker color, it defaults to white. If you have a white marker, it defaults um, as the selected state will change to the hero color that you've chosen for your whole course. So that's just a nice way of incorporating it into the graphic rather than having it on the outside. Okay, so moving on to um, the final one here. There's not a massive amount of difference with the way I've set up the hotspot, um, but I've just combined it with two other blocks. Okay, so if we break this down, you can see I have a full width image. I have the labeled graphic block and then another full width image. So let's have a look. Let's add those ones in. So you've got the quick access blocks down the bottom here now. So I'm going to add in an image. I'm going to change that one to a full width. And then I'm going to upload my image. Okay, so I've got my two waves here and I want the top one. Okay. Okay, and what I want to do here is I want to remove the padding at the bottom. So, because I want both of my blocks to sit flush with one another. So I've removed the padding at the bottom. I'm just going to duplicate this block here and change the graphic to the bottom. And then in this instance, I will remove the padding from the top. So no padding here. And I'll play around with the bottom padding after I've added the content in. I'm not going to worry about that now. And then in between both of these, I would like my labeled graphic. Okay, so again, I'm going to add 
my image that I have pre-prepared here. Okay, and I'm going to delete these in preparation. Okay, and again, as you can see, I have these little dots um, at the bottom so I know where my markers go. Okay, I'm just going to close those off. Now you can see that I don't have any color in the back of my image here, but I want it to match these um, waved lines if you like. So again, I'm going to use this color picker here. Um, go to settings, background, and just paste that one in there. And so I now know that they match. And then I'm going to remove the padding of these two as well. So you can now see that these two blocks butt up against one another here perfectly. So there's no spacing. Okay, so let's just do a quick preview. And I want you to keep an eye out for the way the, um, the graphics or the markers animate in. Okay, so you would have hopefully caught that they came in in order. So if these weren't in order, it looks a bit funny and as they animate in a bit oddly. So when the learner clicks on them, you'll see that they can navigate through in order as well. Um, so you can see that these ones were in order and that's great. And you will also notice that when the pop-up appears, it changed to the left-hand side of my graphic here um, because there was no room for it. Now, in this instance, it's fine, but just bear that in mind because if this is covering any key content on the graphic that's behind it, you might want to just move the, the marker around slightly. Okay, let's just have a look at what it would look like on a smaller device. Okay, so on a phone, what happens is the pop-up appears in the full window. Um, so let's just close that one. But what you'll also see is that you can see the full graphic here is appearing next to one another. So just bear that in mind when it is on a phone that it does appear in a line rather than stacking on top of one another. And if we scroll down, you'll see that we have that beautiful um, curved line just to enhance this graphic slightly. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and please bear in mind some accessibility considerations when you do have a go yourselves. Mm -hmm.